We're going to start out this morning a little bit different from the way we normally start out our opening of the videos here on my PI Dream. Uh, I actually started a episode two days ago, then I got sidetracked, but it was a good intro, so we're going to open today's video with two days ago video. So we're going to do that time warp and go back a couple days. Now what you see over my shoulder right here is a bag full of Komote tops and uh, these were dropped off yesterday uh, by Emily. I remember Dave and Emily are farmer friends here uh, that always are dropping stuff off. Uh, wonderful, wonderful people who always <laughs> do really nice stuff for us here. Hey, good morning. So anyway, uh, the Komote tops, what they're used for are things like tenola and, oh, Ness just told me about all the different things she uses to cook it with. But it's stuff that you add to different type of soup bases. Not only did Dave and Emily drop off the Komote tops, they also dropped off a couple of plants I asked them to get, get for me. These are uh, Centaurus trees. Uh, and what these two, uh, inside the individuals inside this bag, what they're going to produce uh, is these, these wonderful centaurities right here. So I have two trees uh, that I have to find a place for today. Uh, somewhere among, <laughs> so it's not good. I don't know where I'm gonna put it, but I'm gonna find some place to put it. But anyway, today is going to be mainly working on some of the irrigation back here. I picked up a bunch of parts yesterday from Wilcon. You can see a bunch of things inside here, some valves. and I have to fix something. Uh, my my uh, uh, builder, when he put some of the stuff inside the wall over here, he didn't do it correctly. Uh, so we're going to rip all that stuff out that he did and replace the, uh, the material that's inside here to make this work, hopefully. Uh, and that's the main thing. Also, we are... Uh, also, we're continuing to work on the irrigation, and I'll show you, I think you'll see a little bit in the video uh, that's coming up at the beginning of today's video from a couple of days ago. Remember, time warp, uh, some of the irrigation that's being installed back here. I don't remember what's on that video. It's, it's a very short uh, portion. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get today started with the intro to the video a couple of days ago. Well, good morning, Magandang Umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My P.I. Dream. You notice over my shoulder here in the, uh, the sink by the barbecue, uh, some mango, uh, some centaurus, and a bunch of banana over here. Now, the banana is local. This is Sabah from this area. Uh, but the, the centaurus and the, the mango here, these were brought yesterday. Ah, crazy boy. Uh, these were brought yesterday by our good friends Dave and Emily. Remember Dave and Emily, they have that a big farm uh, that they're always bringing stuff by here. And uh, we're giving them some of our building supplies, leftover building supplies, mainly the gravel and maybe some sand here soon. Uh, and they're picking that up for one of the projects they have at their house. They were here yesterday and they dropped these off. And she is going to bring, I asked her, because I noticed out of all of the the plants, all the citrus that we have in the backyard, we don't have any centaurities. And I really like those. I made them yesterday. I took five of them. I took the peel off, the skin off of, of them. And on the inside, it's sort of like a, mm, a mixture. It's sort of like between a tangerine and a grapefruit. Uh, it has a little bit of a sour taste like a grapefruit or a little bit of the bitterness and the sweetness of like a tangerine orange kind of thing. So I took five of them and I put them in the blender and I added just a little bit of the pre-made, the, the thing that has like, like lemon, they call it lemonade over here, but it's a little powder. A powder has some sugar and some lemon flavor. And I put some ice inside it in the blender and it blended up all the, the seeds that are inside uh, the Centauri so you wouldn't be chewing on seeds and uh, it made a great refreshing afternoon drink around here so we all shared that. Well uh, this morning we'll get into what we're going to do here in the backyard. Uh, maybe a couple projects today we'll see uh, depending on how warm it is today. Uh, okay so let's go ahead and get today started. Now with a further delay let's get today's video underway. <music>
Now, as you can see from the opening, uh, all the little plants are starting to get blossoms. The pomegranate, did you see the pomegranate up on the second floor on the uh, lanai? Uh, starting to get lots of flowers on that. And everything is just coming really alive, even though it's winter here. It's not like our place back in the US. I just looked at the security cameras back in the US. Uh, and all of our banana plants have fallen down from that freeze, that hard freeze that just went across the US. Uh, so all this stuff is knocked down, lots and lots of leaves in the yard that will have to be cleaned up when we visit uh, back this spring. Now here this morning, uh, like you said, it's alive and well, 365 days of the year. Green, 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 growing, growing, growing. As a matter of fact, the calamansi, 365 days of the year, you're gonna get calamansi uh, fruits from your calamansi plants. But the other, a lot of the other plants that you have around here, they're seasonal. There'll be some that actually produce in like September and October and some October, November and some in December, things like that. Uh, so you have a plenty, plenty uh, of variety of fruits all during the year to, for your breakfast and uh, uh, your meals around here. Now, uh, in the backyard, my gardener was here this morning and you can see he dug some trenches back here. We got to do a bunch of pipe laying this morning, this afternoon, uh, it's for several days here. Uh, I want to get this into the into the ground which he already started here I want to get and I want to get the it backfilled as soon as possible because what's gonna happen like I said yesterday in yesterday's video is the the dirt the soil the bottom of the root structure of the grass if it's left out in the Sun too long uh, it could possibly cause some damage to the grass here and it will dry out really fast you see it's already drying out here So let me go ahead and uh, assist him. He's gone for the, he's only here for about 45 minutes in the morning. He got started. Uh, so let me get this backfilled, get some of the grass back into its natural location. And then uh, I'll work with him this afternoon when he gets back. I think what I might do, uh, I might work on that DJI controller today. I might take it upon myself to try to do the reflow on the uh, master motherboard inside there. Uh, something needs to be done. I, I can only use it for uh, plugging into electricity. The batteries will not charge. If I do that, uh, I will video that portion of uh, the repair action for those of you who are interested in uh, el electronics and we'll see if we can't get that reflow to fix that battery charging problem. Anyway, for right now, let's go ahead and get started on this project. Okay, well, that section is done. Uh, the area behind the Kubo, that's all buried. And uh, then we can focus on, well, not all of it, actually. There's one little section back there that's going to the outside wall. I'm gonna put a water bib on the outside of the fence. So I have access to water on the outside as well. It's gonna be two purpose. Remember, that's going to be for maybe some type of drip irrigation for everything from the sidewalk, the half meter strip with all the palms and the small decorative plants out there as well as I can use it for a water bib if I want to wash my vehicle or use anything with a hose on the outside. Uh, but I still have to drill a hole. I still have to run down to one of the hardware stores and get the PPR connector with the stainless steel insert uh, to end up on the outside of the wall. So we'll do that later on. There's no hurry on that right now since it's not going to be used. Uh, I want to get the irrigation system done. Uh, so right now, I'm doing some watering. Yeah. Okay, tip of the day. Anytime you remove grass, like we did around the edge, we're pulling up the sod a little bit. Anytime you separate it from the existing soil and you cut some of the roots and you're gonna put it back and you want it to grow well, uh, fast and healthy, make sure you do a rigorous plan of watering uh, multiple times a day. Keep it wet until it establishes this root back inside the soil. Remember when we planted the, well, when the landscape company came here and they planted all the sod here inside the yard. Uh, one thing that they did all morning, all afternoon, and all evening, they did what I'm doing right here. They sat out here with the hose and they just watered the heck out of the grass. 
so it establishes its roots back inside the soil. It will dry out very quickly and will prevent you from having any uh, dead uh, uh, grass in the future. Uh, and you'll have to replant that as well. So anyway, a tip of the day, make sure you keep it wet and often. Now here we are back to present day. We're finished with the time warp. We're back into Friday here, Friday, February 8th. Uh, so what I want to do today, I just want kind of want to give you an idea of what I have planned, uh, what's in store for doing some of the modifications back here on some of the plumbing. Um, and I think mainly the main focus is going to be back in this area today. Uh, I have some very tight areas to work. I hope I can get the fusion welder in back here to do the things that I want to do. Uh, but let me just go ahead and start out by showing you what I plan on doing. Now, one of the things I would like to do, I want to take out all of this, all of the section that my builder put inside here. Uh, there's several mistakes inside here that needed to be taken care of. It was just done too haphazardly and, and, and kind of incorrectly too. Anyway, uh, this pipe right here, this pipe is the pipe that comes, actually, no, it goes into the cistern right here. So this is the on-off valve right here. This comes from the subdivision right here. And it goes through here, through that pipe, and fills inside the cistern in the event that we don't have enough rainfall to keep the cistern full of water. Uh, but there's some problems with this design, with this implementation. And one has to do with this pipe was cut way too short. We made this really nice big hole in the wall so we could embed the pipe and then cover it up with concrete and then paint it so you wouldn't even notice it. Uh, but it was done incorrectly. This is too short. All this pipe sticks out way from the wall. Uh, I have another inch worth that needs to go. It needs to go in. It's an inch short on this pipe right here. So we're going to probably cut this pipe out, make it ex an, an extender to go in a little bit further. Plus, we're going to change all this plumbing around right here because you see the ground level, ground level of here. When we fill this area in, after we get done with everything, we're happy with the pipes. When we fill this area in, this ground level is going to come to here. Now this is a T for a water bib. Now your water bib is going to have the end of the water bib sticking inside the dirt. Uh, my builder didn't take that into consideration that this was eventually going to be filled one day and he put this so low. So this is kind of useless right here. So what we're going to do, we're going to cut all of this out. We're going to move a, uh, or actually I have a replacement, a T for this, for the water bib. We're going to move it way up here, either there up here or maybe we'll cut this out and get it a little bit further away from this electrical uh, electrical and, and power, uh, or, or electrical and water should be as far apart from each other as possible. Uh, it should have never been this close anyway. So we'll move it over there. Then we'll replace this faulty, this is a faulty valve here. It's, it's, and it could be not faulty, it could be that my builder didn't put it in properly. Also what I wanna do is I wanna replace this valve right here. This, uh, this valve is kind of faulty. It doesn't, uh, it, it takes forever to get this thing with a huge amount of pressure, tightness that you have to turn to get the water to shut off. So it's possible that one of the components, maybe the gasket inside, uh, the o-ring inside is bad it's possible that this was put in incorrectly i don't know uh, these type of valves actually have an input and an output uh, uh there should be an arrow so we'll check that we'll, we'll we'll do a check on my builder to see if he actually put this in correctly i'm not sure if he's even aware that there's a input and an output to these things uh, so we're going to cut all this out we're going to put the valve on this side we're going to put the water bib uh, connection either here or further down here and again, we're going to replace all of this so this fits up nice and tight, and then we can go ahead and fill this in the concrete. Now, the anyway. second part of today's modification is we are going to tap in. Once we change all this pipe over here, we're going to put a T down here, and we're going to use a uh, half inch pipe, and we're going to come through the wall. We're going to penetrate to the wall above this larger pipe that we have inside here, and we're going to put a T into this section right here. Now, what that's going to do for us here is give us two options of having water going out to our zones. We're gonna have the option of the cistern down here, and we're gonna have an, another option of the subdivision water uh, so that we can prime the pump. Or we can possibly, I don't know if there's gonna be enough pressure, I think we'll be okay with the existing 35 PSI or whatever we have at this point right here, plus the pump to be able to satisfy uh, one zone at a time. I think we'll have enough flow. 
uh, but we the the challenge is we have to make sure that we have cutoff valves similar to this cutoff valve over here we need to have two cutoff valves so it's an either or type of a situation either subdivision mortar or the cistern and we have to make sure that they're not both on at the same time so that we're not pushing water back into the cistern or we're sucking from both the cistern and the subdivision mortar at the same time and I'll show you that with our design as we go along today's project and we're going to do something a little bit unusual, something that we don't normally do at the very beginning. We're going to do our shout outs early today because I know I'm going to get so deep in today's project that it's probably going to slip my mind and I don't want to let something <laughs> slip as important as an anniversary or birthday shout out uh, get by on uh, today's episode. Now the first shout out today is for an anniversary shout out and it's a belated anniversary shout out for two days ago for February 6th and it is for June and Marianne Asian uh, who now reside in upstate New York. So to the two of you, we want to wish you a happy, happy anniversary. anniversary. And now I have a couple of birthday shout outs to go and they are for today for February 8th. And remember our good friends, Dave and Emily, uh, the farmers who bring us all these neat things. Oh, did you eat your, your, your you. centauris? You already ate your centauris uh, yeah, this morning? Yeah, oh, it's foodies. gone. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, uh, to, uh, to Emily, it is actually Emily's birthday today. Yes. And Emily, you're one of the sweetest people, uh, one of the sweetest people that we've ever known. Uh, and thank you. Thank you so much for all the stuff that you're always bringing mm -hmm. over here. Yeah. Uh, the, the farm here at Little Feliz in the backyard is it would not have been or not will will not be what it could have been without all your contributions here as well and our final birthday shout out goes to and i i know it's supposed to be a special special birthday shout out but i just can't seem to remember who, who's that special birthday shout out supposed to be for today Hey, it's me. <laughs> it's my birthday. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. That's right. It's Nessa's birthday today. Uh, so, <laughs> so anyway, special birthday shout out to Ness. And uh, I think we're going to have a quiet. We're going to go out to dinner tonight. We're going to share some uh, enjoyable birthday moments for ourselves later on this evening. It's going to be a little quiet today. So uh, anyway, to <laughs> both of our birthday shout outs, uh, Emily and Ness, I want to wish both of you a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Emily. <laughs>now that i got the wall cleared so i can run the pipe i'm not going to focus so much on this area right now and i'm going to move over to this area right here so this area right here i'm going to prepare this pipe area because this is a, this is kind of tricky i don't really have a lot of room to work over here uh, a case in point is this little t has to go in between this and you see it's a little t is a little bit wider than the connector right here so i am going to have to push this out i'm going to have a little bit of a bend either here or over there or both i really don't want to put a a coupler inside here a joining coupler and trim a piece out so i think we'll be okay if i have to i will i don't know if i have it in my inventory which means i would have to go and get another one uh, so right now i'm going to try to drill the hole here uh, i have my drill that will be good enough it's big enough for the I think the 25 millimeter and the half inch is much smaller than the 25 millimeter uh, so it should f do well here but what I have to do I want to go this way be uh, drilling from this side because it'll be clean going through this side the other side will get a blowout when the drill bit goes out on the other side it's going to punch some of that plaster coat off on the edge and I don't care about that side over there because that's going to be buried with soil uh, but I want it to look clean on this side so <laughs> that presents another problem well it's really not a problem and I just have to remove these filters so that my drill will fit straight on this side so I'm going to remove these and then I'm going to drill a hole through the wall and then we'll start preparing this area for the connections. Now before we continue working on this, I want to show you something that I mentioned earlier and it had to do with did my builder install the pipe uh, valve, this one right here, did he install it upside down? Uh, and what I want to show you is 
there is an actual flow. You see the little arrow on there? Can you, I don't know if you see the arrow. And the arrow shows going from my thumb, going to, towards this direction, towards my other, my ring finger over here. And there's a reason for that. And it has to do with the, the design, the engineering design of the valve itself. You see on the inside, that's a protected area inside there. So you don't get any debris or anything. And I'm sure there's other reasons for it, but I'm just gonna make an assumption on debris. But you see on the opposite side, the, the exit port, you see it's all open right there. Uh, that, that valve, portion right there with the o-ring moves up and down inside there well this is the way we're going to install it we're going to do the input and then the output on this side let me show you how my builder installed his uh, which might be the main problem uh, probably is with the reason why we do not have good flow you see the arrow there uh, you see the arrow on the side uh, it's flowing against the, the water is going this way right now this was the input and it goes around the opposite side uh, but the the input's supposed to be this side and it's supposed to go this way. So he actually, it shows it on both sides. You can see the arrow on both sides. He actually installed this the opposite way, uh, which probably means that this valve inside here is all clogged up with uh, from debris from the uh, initial installation, anything that was in the pipe or anything like that. And there's a reason people do this. There's a reason why they engineer it like this. And there's a reason why you should have a real plumber installing your plumbing in your house and not your builder. So a little bit different, a little bit different. We have some more uh, valves inside. We have a bypass and uh, it's time to do a functional check. So let me go out to the street, turn on the water to the house and we'll come back here and we'll see, uh, we'll do a functional check basically, make sure there's no leaks, make sure everything works as advertised. Okay, now with the water turned on to the front, no obvious leaks, I don't see any problems here so far. Let's check our water bib. Let's see if we have water coming out of here. Oh, that's always a good sign. Oh yeah, okay, that's good. And let's see, if we open this up, uh, this is gonna provide water to the cistern. Let's see if that works. Well, yep, the sound indicates we're getting water down there. So let me turn that off. And the next is the most important test, and that's gonna be uh, the feed, the priming of the pump. Let's see if that works. Now, this is the feed, the new feed that would go through the filters and into the pump. So we'll open it up here first, and we'll open up. Now, this is a little bit empty. Let's see if water starts going inside of here. Oh, that's a good sign. That is a good sign. And then we have the pump over here. We're showing pressure on the pump. Uh, let's go ahead and plug the pump in. Okay, we have some great water pressure. Now let's go see if we can get uh, some of the zones to kick in. and see if it will support now from the subdivision water through our pump, let's see if it will support irrigation in the backyard. So we'll hit up with zone number two, which is right here. Okay, well, it looks like it's working well. It, I don't have quite the pressure, and I didn't expect to get quite the pressure that I would having uh, the, the water coming directly from the cistern below. Uh, because remember, we have lots of line loss. Uh, we're running in on a half inch pipe, half inch pipe feeding a uh, three quarter inch pipe for the runs going all the way to the, to the, uh, the sprinkler head system here. But in the event of a failure, uh, and I'm going to tell you about a failure here in just a little bit. In the event of a failure uh, and you cannot use the cistern, uh, then we have another option. And it looks like it's working well. It looks like I'm able to hit uh, the full coverage also, uh, each one of the zones. So, let's talk about failure. 
Okay, well, I am out of the sun right now, and uh, as I promised, I was going to talk to you about uh, the topic of failures. Uh, but look, I want to tell you something, and this is not a failure. This designing this basement down here, I'm in the stairwell right here. I am in the stairwell going down to the basement. I got to tell you, from ground level, right, even in the stairwell right here, and it, when you walk inside the, the garage, and the garage basement uh, it is really, it's only about one and a half, maybe 1.7 meter underground. But it is so cool. It is probably, I'm going to say about 10 degrees Fahrenheit and maybe about mm, 6 degrees centigrade or something like that. I don't know. It is much, much cooler. It is so comfortable inside the basement. I know once the house is all complete and I get all the yard work, I'm going to be hanging out in the basement a lot during, during the summer season and uh, working on projects inside the basement. So it's so, so comfortable inside there. Now, what I want to talk about was failures. Uh, failures, and wh what is the failure? Well, you know, there's a lot of failures when it comes to building, but most of the time you can mitigate and you fix the failures. Hopefully you can catch it ahead of time. Now, I always talk about being on site and making sure you're there, if you can be, uh, to be able to catch all these mistakes before they happen and they're swept underneath the carpet. Or have somebody else in your place, or have a good builder to begin with. If you have a good builder, then you don't have to worry about that. Now I am going to make a guess, I'm going to make a guess in here, I'm going to say that over half, over 50% of the contractors that you find here in the Philippines are probably not going to be competent enough to do all the tasks that they're going to take on. A case in point, in this build right here, had I not been, it, it would have been a disaster, literally a disaster, a safety hazard disaster on the way a lot of the build went here. Uh, but as long as you have uh, either yourself or somebody that's competent or a good builder, uh, then you don't have to worry about that. But then what do you do? Uh, if you catch it in time, uh, you can stop it, you can talk with your contractor, and, and or you can bring on somebody who knows what they're doing uh, to complete the task at hand. Uh, now we've had so many tasks here that were not done right at the very beginning and, and didn't get done right at the very end. And I keep finding things as, I, as I'm going along. And you're going to find that. You might not find things until one, two, three, six years down the road uh, that wasn't done right. It could be a leak in the wall, it could be a leak in a foundation, a slab. Uh, it could be an electrical problem. It could be all kind of things. So be prepared for things like that. That's why I'm always telling you: you need to find uh, you need to find the best contractor that you possibly can, best engineer, and go with his references. Look at his portfolio. Talk to the people uh, who he's built houses for in the past. Now this builder right here, I will tell you, I caught him on so many things uh, with mistakes. We had so many things. Our uh, showers, our showers. Had I not caught it in time, our showers would have been inverted. And when you turn the water on, there would be no shower coming through the shower head. It would always come through the one, and you would always have to p press the bypass for the shower to work. That would have been really uh, bad because normally the pressure is better from the overhead than it is the uh, the one. Uh, also, uh, oh, th there's so many things. But uh, I'm, what I'm doing, I'm kind of getting off track here. Uh, what I wanted to get on topic with right now was the failure in the cistern. Uh, the reason I push so hard today to get this bypass system so they could use the subdivision mortar uh, in the event that I don't have cistern mortar, which I'm not going to have cistern mortar for a while. And you wonder, why James, why are you not going to have cistern mortar for a while? Well, I put uh, the equivalent, I don't know how many thousand, seven, ten thousand, I don't know, liters of water inside there from the subdivision. I put it in the cistern and uh, that was while I was doing testing and then I would be prepared to use it for the, uh, the, the, the regular warding, the irrigation of the yard. Well, I put it in there and I only did a minor amount of testing. I'm talking about less than 30 minutes worth of testing over the days that I installed this. Well, I went down from a meter and a half worth of water in, a, in a about a three and a half by three and a half wide. So meter and a half deep, three and a half by three and a half that's a lot of liters. There, there are people who do the calculations on it, but it's a lot of liters. I'm going to probably say, again, six, seven thousand liters or something like that. Maybe more. Well, anyway, I, uh, I went back a couple days later and it was all gone. Every bit of the water was gone. It was back down to that same approximately 12 inches of water that it's been over the entire season. Uh, so when I said that I thought that my builder had messed up on uh, the water going from the secret gutter, uh, being able to get into the cistern, that might not be the case. It still might be the case, I don't know. Uh, but the problem we have right now is the cistern won't hold water. It's not waterproof properly. I asked them to do a minimum of three layers of the Cambridge waterproofing system. I'm gonna bet they did one, uh, they did one coat 
and they booked and they never finished. You wanna know why I'm gonna bet on that? It's because I have enough Cambridge waterproofing uh, uh, solution, uh, the containers, I have enough to do at least two more coats inside there of the cistern. Well anyway, the case in point that we're talking about right here is I have no way to, for water to stay inside. I lost, I paid for it and I lost about 7,000. I'm gonna say about 7,000. So anyway, I bet somebody is gonna give me the solution on exactly how many liters that I lost uh, seeping out through improper water water uh, proofing of the cistern again it's probably a little over a meter deep by about three and a half by three and a half uh, for the the dimensions on the inside of the cistern so I lost all that and that's because of improper water proofing and I'm gonna make another bit I'm gonna make another bit that my my builder has never built a cistern in his life he's probably done septic tanks uh, which he did this one wrong also by the way um, but uh, I'm gonna say he's never done a cistern in his life so uh, again, I'm not going to cry over spilt milk. I'm just going to share my experience with you and tell you if these things do happen, uh, you have to fix them. And what am I going to do to fix the problem with the cistern? Uh, well, while I was in Wilcon yesterday, uh, my number one uh, uh, t support, sales support uh, technical guy inside there, we sat down there and we put the little tech solution down for the piping that's working right now marvelously. Um, but we talked about waterproofing. And they have a fiberglass. A solution inside there and you can use it with the Cambridge system that I have so basically you put one coat of uh, of the the Cambridge waterproofing solution it's a sticky solution then you put some fiberglass over it uh, it's a fiberglass mesh and they have it in stock there and then on the outside after you put that around on the outside of the fiberglass mesh you put another layer of the waterproofing solution and you can do that two or three times if you want to um, the other solution, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to try that because that's the most economical solution. The next solution is actually putting a membrane inside there or using a diff different waterproofing solution. Uh, but putting a membrane, basically like a PVC liner, like you would do in a koi pond, a pond, a pond in general. Uh, and, but that's very expensive. PVC, the size of that's about a 9 meter by 9 meter uh, is what I need squared to be able to fit inside that hole. Um, the, the price on that mm, is, is probably, it's quite expensive, much more expensive than doing the fiberglass solution. So I think what we're going to do, I think we're going to try step one, the fiberglass solution, see if we can stop the leak. Uh, and then the next solution, if we don't do that, maybe we'll put some type of a membrane inside here, like the PVC uh, that I was talking about earlier. By the way, I have to do a fix action for the pipe that's going out to the front yard. Uh, before my gardener gets there because he's doing the digging and we're off by about this much and I just have to cut a section out and put a little coupler in there and put it back together so he can dig the hole drop the pipe inside the ground. <laughs> hey sweetie, what are you doing? Huh? <laughs> well anyway, Ness thought it would be a good idea to take you along with us on the, uh, uh, the birthday uh, restaurant dinner for this evening. We're going to try a new, we're going to try a new restaurant. Well, you remember when we went to Santa Rosa and uh, we went to that small mall, but it had all the great restaurants in it. And there was a restaurant in there, in there called All For You. And they do Shabu Shabu, right? right? And grill. And grill. And, and Ness wants to go to a that specific restaurant. It's but unlimited. They, yeah, and they have one right here in the SM, so she said she wants to go to that one, so she chose that one. We're going to go there. And while we're there, we're going to do a restaurant review uh, simultaneously. So we're going to, uh, two birds with one stone, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to do that. Let's go on to the restaurant and uh, uh, see what kind of food uh, that All For You actually has. Okay, this is our first experience here at All For You. And uh, the, the, the host, uh, the person who brought out the, the waiter, whatever you want to call him, 
Uh, he said, we will not regret this meal. It, it, <laughs> it looks great already. So even though this is supposed to be like Japanese, it's a lot like the Korean restaurants that we ate at when we were in Korea. And as a matter of fact, when you put your uh, meal together, basically your uh, your lettuce that you have, you take your lettuce, then you add some you add some rice to it, <coughs> and you add whatever meat that you want to put on it, uh, like uh, this beef that they have here. You could dip the beef inside the different sauces. They got soy and sesame seed and some hot sauce stuff here. And what I like doing, I like also adding a little bit of kimchi. And then sometimes what I do is I top it off with this little one kind of hot sauce here. And you kind of make it like a like a sandwich. You kind of scrump it up and you eat it. As you can see, we, we pretty much knocked out everything on... It's an all-you-can-eat, but I, I, I cannot eat all I can eat because there's so much. It's, there's such generous portions. You ate everything. I ate everything, but it's such generous <laughs> portions that they give you here. Anyway, this is Lenz. He, he, he kind of gave us... He broke us in to the, uh, to the style of cooking. Normally, I think... Normally, everybody else cooks on their own, right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> but what he did, he, he actually cooked for us. So we, we had to cook, we had the food, we had we had everything. And then we had the ice cream. They have ice cream, so it's a full meal with ice cream, and uh, it's just this is just a great meal here. Yeah. What do you say? Two, two thumbs? thumbs? No, two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna gather everything up, and we're gonna head back. I don't know where are we headed. We headed back home. Back home. We're going to walk, down, walk around. Oh, we, we need to walk around because <laughs> this meal was so filling. You want, you want to know how I feel right now? I feel like... I feel like that guy up there right now. So, uh, uh, well, we're going to do some walk around, head back home. But before we do, we'll close probably out in the mall uh, because there's some things we have to tell you about, some upcoming events. It's going to be an exciting few days coming up. Uh, this weekend into the beginning of next weekend. And we'll tell you all about it when we go out there. Well, anyway, I think that's about it for tonight. Uh, we have a really big lineup for you over the next few days. Tomorrow, tomorrow, San Juan. This is going to be a huge event. There's going to be a grand opening, a grand opening of a theme park and a museum by a couple of our subscribers. A couple of our subscribers, Yvonne and Manfred. Uh, they were uh, guests on one of our episodes way back when. Uh, they live in New York, uh, but they also have this big farm on a riverside in uh, San Juan. And they are doing a big thing for the, the culture. It's a cultural kind of a museum and theme park that they're going to do. It's kind of like, it's not a grand opening because they haven't really started yet, uh, but it's like the beginning of the beginning and we're going to be part of that. And they have uh, the, the Mabuhai, the Mabuhai singers are going to be there. Uh, so it's like we're playing, I can't believe we're playing in the same kind of an event that some professional players who've been playing for 40 years, I think 40 years? A lot of years, let's say. And I think, uh, I think the, of the original members, since they've been playing so long, I think two of them 
are part of the original members of the Mabuhai Singers. Uh, so we will be doing that on tomorrow, tomorrow which is Saturday. And then on Monday, Monday, uh, Sunday and Monday, well actually Friday, Saturday, oh Saturday, Sunday and, wait a minute, I am so confused. Saturday, Sunday and Monday uh, yeah. is the uh, fiesta for Barangay Anilao, our Barangay. Uh, we won't be able to do it on Saturday because remember Saturday we're going to be in San Juan. But we you will be doing it again. on Sunday and Monday. And you know, on Monday, I have, was invited as a guest to be a judge for the, the Battle of the Bands. So that'll be an exciting day as well. Also something I didn't include in uh, today today's episode, uh, and I didn't include it yesterday, but yesterday I was inducted. I was inducted into the Rotary Club for yes. Leap of South. <laughs> And it was a big event yesterday. I didn't realize how big the event was going to be when we went down there. Uh, but they had some dignitaries. They had the former mayor of Lipa before our current mayor that we have right now. And, and, and it was some really distinguished guests. Also, my good friend who I didn't meet until yesterday, but he's been my good friend via email, uh, Edgar Reyes. Edgar Reyes was the one who actually got the whole ball started getting me involved with the Rotary Club. So uh, I, I think I have a picture, and I'll try to post the picture of uh, us sitting inside the uh, at the Rotary uh, organization uh, there yesterday as well. Yeah. But it, uh, and, and I want to thank Edgar. Thank Edgar very much for getting me engaged with the with the club, and it's a it's a very worthwhile organization. So let me go ahead and close. I've been babbling on enough right here. We have a <laughs> lot of things to do. I have to do some editing on some video tonight. We have some practicing before. Uh, we go to San Juan tomorrow, and uh, I think that's about it. So let me close from here in SM Lipa. If you enjoyed today's video, please give us a thumbs up. Please share, and if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You'll be subscribed and you'll be notified the next time we upload a new video. So until such time, you have a wonderful and blessed day.